I'm going to share my screen for a little bit. I want you to read the scripture with me tonight, and then uh, we'll, we'll go to the word just for a few moments. I actually want to share this with you all. I kind of feel bad because this is something that my son, my oldest son and I, we kind of share this tagline, right? And, and I, I, he's probably not on tonight, so I think I'm okay by saying this, but I have a tendency to, to close out a lot of my text messages to my oldest son, Mike, Mike with these, these four words, keep praying, keep pressing. In fact, I sent them this just yesterday morning, uh, maybe once a week, every two weeks or so, I'll, 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 we'll, we'll go back and forth with various text messages and I always close out with, hey, Mike, keep praying, keep pressing. Um, uh, I've always, honestly, I thought about it becoming a tattoo one day. Who knows? Uh, just kind of think it out loud. What, I want to keep this thing fresh and centered because that seems to be the model and the mantra of my life and of many of you all's lives in this season. We got to find a way to keep praying, right? And we got to find a way to keep pressing. So I want to take the next 15, maybe 16 minutes. And I want to talk to you tonight about the value of finishing strong. We're, we're, we're less than two weeks away now, roughly, of finishing up arguably the, the, the toughest year in the last 120 years or so. And you were part of that. We may not have been part of the civil rights. We may not have been part of the, 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 the Great Depression in the 30s. We may not have been part of World War I and World War II and the Vietnam War. And we may have missed the, 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 the flu pandemic of 1918. And some of y'all wanted to be there with Azusa Street and all of the great revival movements. And all, no, but we will be able to say we survived COVID-19. We survived arguably one of the worst, most challenging years in America's history. And I'm just gonna say it this way. I think the world's history I think we, we, we we're on a global impactful level of what we've experienced. But for the saints of God, I'm reminded the Bible says that the more Israel was afflicted, the more they multiplied. The more Israel was persecuted, the more they prospered. And I have to kind of see that tonight for God's people. We've seen death on every hand. We've seen destruction on every hand. We've seen disease on every hand. But you know what? Look at you tonight. Look at you tonight. You're not bad off. You're not that bad off. And I think many of you all, if you were to come out of the closet and just say, hey, let me just be full disclosure, full transparency. Some of y'all are doing better right now than you were at the beginning of this year. Through the pandemic, through COVID-19, through the pres presidential election debacles and through the, the, the unfortunate civil unrest and the brutalities and all of the injustices we've seen this year. Some of you all are making more money right now than you did this time last year. You're buying homes. You bought new cars, you're paying down debt, you're opening businesses, you're going back to school. You know, you, somehow or another, you, you, you're, you're making it. Why? Because you, you've learned the value of keep praying and keep pressing. You keep praying and keep pressing. Philippians 3, 12 says this, not that I've already attained, not that I've already attained, or I'm already perfected. But Paul writes and says, I press on. I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have that be apprehended. For one thing I do, I'm forgetting those things which are behind and I'm reaching for things that are ahead. I press towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Let me read verse uh, 13 and 14 again. I do not count myself to have apprehended, but here's one thing that I do. One thing that I do. I'm learning to forget those things which are behind me. I'm reaching forward to those things that are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God, which is in Christ Jesus. You know, tonight, just for the next few moments, the psalmist uh, has said, I'm pressing onward the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. The songwriter goes on to say, I'm still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on high ground. You all can hear that in the back of your head, right? Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. And that should be our prayer even on tonight. Should that not be our prayer on tonight? Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Somehow or another, the psalmist found a way to keep pressing. The songwriter found a way to keep praying. He found a way to keep believing God. No matter what was going on in his life and going on in this world, and what makes you great tonight, what makes you anointed tonight, what makes you called and appointed and approved for the test is that you're anointed for this. You remember that, right? You are anointed for this season. And not only are you anointed for surviving this 
great season of challenge. You are anointed and approved for what God has in store for you. I pastored this church now for over 26 years. I've never been indicted for hype, a hustle, or bamboozle, or, or stretching, or falsifying the word of God. And I don't need to profit lie or make something out of nothing. The word of God all by itself will encourage and prophetically build and strengthen you. And this is why I believe when you get a divine revelation from God, and that's why you got to keep praying, because it is only in those prayer chambers. It is only in those secret prayer closet that God reveals his will, reveals his plans, reveals the process. And even if he chooses not to show you everything, he leaves a hope, he leaves a faith, he leaves a, a grace on your life that keeps you moving forward. But not only is the revelation, you gotta, you gotta, you, you gotta pull yourself up by the bootstraps and realize, man, I, I, I gotta apply this now. I gotta apply everything I'm learning in the word of God in my marriage, with my children, in my family. Somehow or another, I gotta take what I'm learning in church and apply it to corporate America. So I can be that servant leader that rises straight to the top. So I can walk by faith and open up my own entrepreneurial opportunity in business. But it doesn't stop there because it now goes into manifestation. And I believe that tonight you would agree that we've seen some manifestations of God's faithfulness and grace. I was in prayer this morning and I just said, God, look how good you've been to the Stevens family. And I pray that this does not incite anyone to anger or hatred or envy or jealousy because i do realize that i'm on facebook live and you know tell me who's watching this on facebook live but i i'm gonna say this tonight god you've been good to the stevens family this year you've been faithful no we we didn't get all the doors open we'd wanted and there's still some lingering prayer requests that we want to see answered but for the most part you've been good to our home you've been good to our children you've been good to us and we've we, we, we suffered some loss, yes. We, we've seen loved ones die going to be with the Lord, yes. But God, you've been good to us. And I think some of you all, if not most of you all tonight, can say the exact same thing. I think about Philippians chapter, chapter 3 tonight. And again, I, I don't want to be long tonight. I just want to encourage you how to finish strong in 2020. Uh, we, you know, challenges are, are, are part of all of our lives. OK, you know that by now, if you didn't know that by now, you know it now. Right. For the man or the woman who says, hey, man, I'm just <laughs> I'm just easy breeze, cool, got it made in the shade, drinking lemonade. Well, you know what? You won't be able to say that after 2020 because you've seen some of the worst challenges that a man or woman could ever face all at the same time. But let's be reminded tonight that Psalm 34 of 19 says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, the Lord delivers him out of them all. Challenges are presented with purpose and there's a reason in mind. Challenges just don't ha haphazardly come your way for nothing. No, God sends challenges. God allows you to go through some tests and some trials and tribulations. And maybe this is why Paul says that I consider that the sufferings of this present time, right? I mean, aren't we not seeing sufferings in this present time? Well, they're not worthy to be compared with the glory that's, that, that shall be revealed. So God is revealing something in you that is glorious. And this is why in the morning, you got to say, God, good morning on this glorious morning. It's cold, it's raining, it's damp outside, but it's still a glorious morning because it's glory that God is bringing out of you. Challenges are opportunities to make you and I better. Again, I was kind of just kind of jesting a little bit earlier with Kim and, and Herb. But to see how God has blessed her podcast. So I look at Sister Patty, she leads worship. It's always, this is nothing new. This did She didn't wake up one morning, read a book and say, oh, how to be a worship leader extraordinaire. It's always been in her. But we may not have known this had we not been in this type of season. You look at Elder Dalton, Elder Dalton and the, uh, Steve Dalton, the Levitical Singers of Charlotte. You know, to, 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 to finish this year as the number one per placement and number one of, 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 of his uh, recording and his music. I don't know if that would have happened had we not been through these challenges. So God makes us better. Psalm 119, 71 reminds us it was good that we were afflicted. So we may, we may have learned your word even the more. The law from your mouth is more precious uh, than, than, than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. What are you saying? Thank God for affliction. Thank God for persecution. Thank God for the pandemic. Thank God for challenges because they really do make us better. So what does it really mean tonight in my closing to pray 
or to keep praying and to keep pressing again. This is something that I share with my son. I said, Mike, learn how to keep praying and keep pressing. I don't share this with Matthew or Charisma as much as I share this with Mike because I know he understands the vernacular. He understands the language. Somehow, son, you got to keep praying. You may not see that door open just yet, but don't stop praying. Uh, maybe this opportunity has not manifested, but, but don't stop pressing. Praying to me is the spiritual part of moving forward. Pressing is the actual physical part of not throwing in the towel. And may I leave every one of you all tonight with that delicate balance of being highly spiritual, but deeply practical. Let me say it this way. Be deeply spiritual, yeah, but be highly practical. You got to stay in the word. You got to keep believing God. You got to keep walking by faith, but you got to keep knocking on some doors. You got to keep uh, uh, passing out your resume. You got to keep uh, uh, looking for those, those business concepts. And I know you get weary and exhausted and get tired. And I know it's often lonely with the, the path you, you, you get to take, but you can't throw in the towel, my brothers and sisters. You know, I, I, in my personal reading, and, and again, I, I've only got a few minutes left, but this morning I was just kind of reviewing the last few chapters of, of the last few verse of Psalm, right? You know, be, before I kind of went on, on my little R&R &R week, you know, I was, I was really kind of digging in the Psalm. So I went back this morning and I looked back at Psalm 5, Psalm 6, Psalm 7. And I, and I, I, yeah, I saw something in Psalm 5 that, that really struck a note. And again, let me just go back and share my screen. I, I think it's very important that you all see this um, uh, on, on tonight. So look at Psalm 5 with me. And if you have your Bibles, you can just turn. If you don't, go ahead and look at my screen. Just look at your screen, okay? Because you see Psalm 5 right here. Here it is. Watch this. Uh, the Bible says Psalm 5, verse 1 through 3. Give ear to my words, O Lord and consider my sighing. The psalmist says, listen to my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you, David says, I pray. For to you, I pray. In the morning, O Lord, hear my voice. And in the morning, I will lay my request before you and I will wait in expectation. I'm reading out of the New International Version. David says two things are gonna happen here. In the morning, I'm going to pray, but I'm not just going to pray only, but I'm going to wait. I think the King James says, I'm going to lift up my eyes. In other words, I'm going to patiently wait for the answer. Matt, just take you down the road real quick of prayer one-on-one. -on -one. Prayer is not just a one-way request box, but prayer is a two-way street. Prayer is dialogue. Prayer is you talking to God and prayer is allowing the Lord to talk back to you. So if you're not hearing from heaven in prayer, you miss, you're shortchanging yourself on the value and the quality of prayer. May I remind every one of you all tonight, particularly as leaders, prayer is not just you giving off your top 10 needs list or your God, I need this by tomorrow list. But sometimes prayer is just listening. And so David understood what it meant to say, you will hear my voice in the morning, but I'll also wait patiently to hear from you. Why is that important tonight? Because if you're going to keep praying, you got to get to a place where you got to keep believing God, to keep pressing in prayer. I thought about David because not only does David write that psalm, but you know David was in some turmoil. If you go to the next psalm, I think it's Psalm 6, he really says, hey God, listen, do not deal with me in your hot displeasure of me. Do not rebuke me as you are angry with me. And so David goes through this whole laundry list of emotions. And then he goes on to say, you know what? At the end of the day, God, you will answer my prayer. Speaking of answering prayer, here's how I'm praying in Psalms, excuse me, 2 Samuel 15. Watch this, 2 Samuel 15, verse 31. Now, David had been told Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And so David prayed, Lord, turn Ahithophel's counsel into foolishness. I read that this morning. I said, God, would you confuse the counsel of my enemies? <laughs> God, would you just go ahead and just frustrate the plans of those who hate me? And I hate to sound a little militant tonight. I know I'm sounding a little uh, radical. I might be a little uh, conspiracy theorist tonight. But God, if David could pray that prayer, how, how, how come I can't pray that prayer? David said, I want you to <clears throat> turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. Chapter 15. Now, why is this important? 
you Bible scholars will love this. Ahithophel is known in the Old Testament as being one. In fact, the Bible says in the next chapter that his counsel was one as if he had, as, as if God was speaking himself. Ahithophel was such a wise man. He had such an ear for the Lord. David himself said Ahithophel was one as if God was speaking himself directly. Why is that important? Because the same thing that made Ahithophel popular was the same thing that brought him to his death. Because David prayed and said, God, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. What do we find out happens two chapters later? I think I'm around chapter 17, if I'm not mistaken. The Bible says, when they did not receive the counsel of Ahithophel, he got on a donkey and went and hung himself. The very thing that he was known for was the very thing of his demise. Why? Because David prayed a radical prayer. God frustrate the plans of my enemies. Uh, do you not know God will listen and answer your prayer as it relates to the will of God? I don't want to take it too deep into that Bible study, but David, man, he, he's a bad dude. You, you got to realize that David was a mercenary. He was a hired killer. He and his men were bad dudes. But he was sensitive, spirit-filled enough, and honest enough to say, God, frustrate the plan of those who hate me. Prayer can do some very powerful things if it's used for God's glory. Jesus said in Luke 18, 1, he told his disciples the parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. May I, may I, may I, may I, may I remind every one of you all tonight? Keep praying. Don't give up. How do I close out 2020? You close out like we started it. Keep praying. Don't give up. How are we going to make it in 2021? We got to keep praying. We got to keep praying. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much power. What does that mean for your business, your job, your company, your ministry, your missions, your hope? Well, here's what that means to me. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god jesus said men should always pray and don't faint don't give up let me close out this message real quick because i know my time is up what does it mean to keep pressing let me give you a couple of things about pressing tonight and i think it's very worthwhile hearing number one if you're gonna keep pressing understand what paul meant when he said brothers it's not that i've already attained it's not that i'm already perfected but i'm pressing on Paul realizes, you know what, at the end of the day, I'm not perfect. I got some more work to do. I know your phones are muted, but just go ahead and say to yourself, Lord, keep working on me. Lord, keep working with me. Keep working on me. Because there's still work to do. I'm still a work in progress, right? He says, listen, uh, 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 I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, I'm forgetting those things that are behind me. There are some things in Paul's past he wasn't proud of. But he knew that if he was going to press on, he couldn't live in yesterday. Some of you all, you moved on in the physical, but your mind is still in yesteryear. Your body is here in December 17th, but your mind is still somewhere back in 2013 or 2019 uh, or 2018. You got to move on from the condemnation of the past. You got to move on not only from the, the phase of the past, but you got to move on from the successes of the past because the past is the past. And this one thing I got to do, you got to do, is press on forward. So friends, tonight, three things. Stay courageously fearless. Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Number two, stay constantly or consistently faithful. Bible says Psalm 37, wait on the Lord. Keep his weight and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. Friends, let's go back to Ahithophel for a quick moment. The Bible says something interesting. He gets on a donkey, he rides off, he gets his house in order, and then he hangs himself. Now, remember now, Ahithophel at one time was one of David's men, but Ahithophel went after Absalom and left David. David didn't have to chase Ahithophel. David didn't have to pursue Ahithophel. You know what David did? He prayed, God, take this man who's full of wisdom, full of revelation, and let his counsel come to nothing to foolishness. And because of him that there was so prideful on his gift of counseling, it cost him his dear life. Friends, you've heard me say it a thousand times, I'll say it tonight. You don't have to chase lies. You don't have to chase your enemies. 
if you give Judas enough rope, in this case, if you give Ahithophel enough rope, he'll end up hanging himself. You can't go into 2021 bitter about what somebody did to you or what someone did not do to you. You cannot go into 2021 holding grudges and you know, this is gonna be the Hatfields and the McCoys and I ain't gonna bear the hatchet. I tell you, I may forgive, but I ain't gonna forget. You, that, that, is, that is no room for the Christian believer. You know why? Because Jesus forgave you. Not only did he forgive you, but he gave you and I commandment that we should forgive others as Christ has forgiven us. And is that not what the Bible says in the book of Romans, that we're to bear each other's burdens, that we're to forbear one another, forgive one another as Christ has forgiven us? Colossians, I think this chapter three, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, should we not be in the business of walking in forgiveness? Someone said that unforgiveness is the silent killer. Okay. Unforgiveness is that silent killer. Whereas you are wishing something for someone else, but you're the one struggling and suffering from that disease. Last and finally, stay committedly focused. So would you say that with me? Let's stay courageously fearless. Let's stay consistently faithful. And let's stay committedly focused. Those three words one more time, fearless, faithful, and focused. If you think you've been focused before, you're gonna to need to be focused 2021. You know why? Because there's a lot of opportunities opening up for you. Would you write down tonight on this December 17th, my daddy's birthday today, you write it down. Pastor Stephen called it out first. 2021 will be a great season of opportunity. It'll be a great year of opportunity. Therefore, you have to be focused. You know why? Just for a moment, go back to Melchizedek. Right before the blessings of Salem was the counterfeit of Sodom. And just before the blessings come your way, the enemy will always try to throw in a counterfeit. He'll always try to throw a monkey wrench into the program. So what do you have to do, brothers and sisters? You got to stay faithful. The Bible reminds us tonight to be steadfast, movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Be fearless. Be faithful. Be focused. Watch and see what the Lord will do for you. Friends, my time is up tonight. But I want to encourage every one of you all to finish strong. Speaking.